dear students welcome to epg pathshala we are going to discuss the work in the idea plan for the formation of arrays and chain this is continuation of the work in the idea plan indeed the work in the idea plan is not only paramount but also long drawn and is completed in many sequential steps it is a foundation work of course it is a blueprint of a work to be done later it is the thinking plan also it is invisible in the end product but it will be surely reflected in the quality and utility of the finished work after dividing entities or concepts discreetly finally we have to position them or place them at their proper logical positions it means we have to weave them into a systematic network of concepts of different ranks it is in other words mapping them that's why classification is also a map of the universe it organizes array and chains make a fine and systematic pattern of entities or objects to be classified these arrays and chains are formed by formulated tenets and principles for objectivity and to mechanize the process and ranganathan did all this work to make this classification quite objective historical perspectives modern library classification started in the late 19th century with the coming of melville dv and the publication of his dv decimal classification initially classification systems such as the dv decimal classification universal decimal classification and the library of congress classification were developed without much theory to guide the technical work of organizing knowledge and arrangement of books in the libraries classification design was a field of a few geniuses who were guided mostly by their intuition flair and inner gifts william charles barwick shears a respected teacher in the university college london derived theory of classification in the form of canons in his famous books but that is now known as static theory of classification other two pioneering names are edward hume of uk ec richardson of usa their work on the theory of classification was mostly descriptive of the existing schemes they mostly wrote textbooks it was a descriptive phase of the theory of library classification the dynamic theory the theory which could be some sort of education to guide future classificationists was yet to be formulated then came henry evelyn bliss a par excellent philosopher and a designer of classification he spent his entire life in designing his classification entitled bibliographic classification before designing his classification which was his lifelong passion prior to that he delved deep and long into the theoretical foundations of library classifications based on empirical foundations of knowledge and its organization in his two famous books on the organization of knowledge bliss formulated many canons and principles of classification to guide the designing of classifications and to evaluate them to formulate the theory of classification rather library classification but that was a phase again of descriptive theory moving towards a dynamic one postulational approach postulational approach means going about the work of designing classification systems by a premeditated or preformulated theory in the form of laws canons principles and postulates van dagenhausen designed his colon classification between 1924 to 1933 ironically he did it without any formulated theory he was a gifted genius indeed he had learned some canons of classification in the classes of his most revered teacher w c b shears whom he describes as the first grammarian of library classification 
after the publication of his Kulam classification in 1933, Ragnarsson started thinking about the theory behind it that lay in, in his unconscious mind while designing the CC. And ultimately, it was published in his famous book, Proli Gomna to Library Classification, first published in 1937, whose second edition was published in 1957 in the UK, and third edition in 1967, which is still being used. That theory was so comprehensive and objective that it became the theory of classification in general. Ranganathan formulated objective, even mechanical methods to design a classification system and also to evaluate them, to compare them. Apart from the five normative laws of library science, he formulated 55 canons, 22 principles, 13 postulates, and 10 devices for designing and evaluation of classification system, which all of these were divided into three plans of work, as you know it, idea plane, verbal plane, and notational plane. Ragnarsson liberated classification design from the elusive flair and intuition and raised it to the status of a science for the future guidance of classifiers and classificationists. Three planes of work. As said already, for this, he divided the whole work into three plans of work, namely idea, verbal, and notational plans. It was a master stroke. He neatly delineated the entire work to be carried out in each plane. Practically, the work in the three planes get intermixed, even intertwined, by the smaller level classificationist. The work in these planes cannot be differentiated with sufficient margins by ordinary people. There cannot be watertight compartmentalization of the planes one can feel. The work cannot be accomplished without keeping the whole picture in mind at every stage and step. Sometimes we have to shuttle between one plane to another plane and so on. Idea plan. This is the first plan of work. It is a plane of foremost importance where the core intellectual work is done. It is a blueprint and it is a thinking plane. The work here pertains to the choice of the model, defining the subject, its scope and sources of terms and concepts, means from where we are to get the concepts or the literature from where we have to collect terms. The core classificatory work is the choice of characteristics and order of their application to produce categories of concepts called facets and isolates, as said in the earlier unit. Further, it is to arrange the isolates into arrays and chains to make a network of concepts, a systematic network of concepts that is to map them. Ranganathan has given five sets of canons for the work in the idea plan, which is, he says that this work is though invisible, but the plan is godlike because it is the most powerful work. If something wrong is done here, then it will get perpetuated throughout the classification. If the work is qualitative, though the work may not look very visible, but it will be reflected in the end product. The quality of work done in the idea plane will result in sound classification. The concept of arrays and chains can be explained by a very simple diagram as given before you. Here is the universe of entities, of any entity, and it has been first divided into subparts A, B, C, D, and so on, up to any extent. And each of its part can be further subdivided. Here, for example, we have taken A divided into A1, A2, A3. Similarly, we can divide B similarly, we can divide C similarly, and D similarly as D1, D2, D3. Then, these parts of A, such as A2, A3, etc., can be further divided. Here, A2 has been divided into A21, A22, A23. Then, A22 can be further subdivided, even A23 can be further subdivided. Here, we have shown the subparts of A22. A221, A222, A223, 
and A224. Similarly, this process can go on endlessly. We can divide anything here. Then to explain the concept or the formation of RNA chains, we will define you, we will explain you one by one. In this diagram, A, B, C, D make an array of the original universe. It is the first universe and A, B, C, D are equal rank of the uh, of the universe of knowledge. Then so are A1, A2, A3, D1, D2, D3. They are also an array but at the lower level. A21, A22, A23 is another array which is a third array which may be called third order array even. Fourth order arrays A221, A222, A223 and A24. Arrays A1, A2, A3 on the one hand and D1, D2, D3 on the other hand are also known as collateral array. They are just like cousin to one another. In the universe of knowledge or in the universe of entities, in this diagram, A, A2, A22, A222 make a chain of classes. In the and the UK, D and D2 make another chain. So similarly, we can go on making arrays and chains, but you, you can see that all these things are fit into a pattern. Canons for arrays. To define an array, it is a horizontal line of entities or group of entities of equal rank arranged in some systematic order. Order is more important because a group even of equal rank, if it is unarranged, then it may not be an array. To be an array, the members having the same weightage, same rank must come in some predetermined and knowable order. For example, all the children of a parent make an array if they are arranged in some order, let us say by age. In the same way, all the seven continents of earth make an array. All the 29 Indian states make an array. And within each state, all its district make another array. To take example from the classification, all the main classes of a classification scheme make an array. For example, the 10 main classes of the Dewey Decimal classification make an array. An array is formed by the one timed dissection of a group by applying a single characteristic to the universe of to be divided. Raghunathan has prescribed the following canons for formation of arrays. One is canon of exhaustiveness, mean the array should be exhaustive of the entire universe, nothing should be left out. Canon of exclusiveness, that each array should be exclusive, one entity should not belong to more than one array. Canon of helpful sequence, as already described, that members in an array should be arranged, put in some order and that order should be helpful to the users. And lastly, canon of consistent sequence, the order once chosen for a group should remain the same for the sake of consistency and uniformity. Canon of exhaustiveness. Now let us detail or explain the meaning and implications of each canon. Canon of exhaustiveness means an array should be all inclusive of its eligible members. Nothing should be left out. See the following array of human beings by the skin of their color. In this array, we have taken only three colors, whites, black, brown. But you can feel this array is not exhaustive as it doesn't include many other colors human beings or men may be born with, such as pale yellow, fair, whitish, and so on. Hence, while forming an array, every member should be included, otherwise classification will not be comprehensive. To make an array exhaustive of the immediate universe of members in a classification schedule, a place is provided for residual classes dumped under the heading others. In the DDC, usually the digit 9 is left for others, mean it is an all accommodating class. Knowledge being dynamic, new members of equal rank may emerge in future also that we must make provisions for the future inclusion. Therefore, every library classification system 
has to make provision for accommodation of potential subjects in future. In fact, is known as the hospitality of classification because what we make today is not only for today; it is also for futures. Hospitality is a must for every classification for accommodating new knowledge that may emerge from time to time. Canon of exclusiveness. Exclusiveness means that an entity should belong to one and only one array. There should be no overlapping of two arrays of the same immediate universe. There should be one and one place for an entity in an array or a group of arrays. Groups should be parallel. They should not be overlapping. In other words, a member should not be included into two groups at the same time. If it does, then it is be called cross classification. For example, in classification of dogs, as they should be kept under mammals or under pets, not under both, as it will result in what is called cross classification to C again. But in electronic databases, an entity being virtual, non-physical, can be placed at more than one place. Hence, in the electronic environment and opaque cross classification is a boon as it provides an extra access point and increases the probability of retrieval or gives high recall value. So we can say that in the print environment, canons can be a bit different than in the electronic environment. What we can say is that canon of exclusiveness is not very useful in the electronic environment. Canon of consistent sequence. It means that if a set of entities occurs at different places, then their arrangement should be the same everywhere. For example, the term male, female, and child occurs in classes psychology, education, law, or even medicine. Their sequence should be the same in all these classes. As another example, the names of countries occur in main classes, geography, and history. Also, the names of languages occur in linguistics and literature. According to this canon, the sequence of countries in the above main classes should be the same. Ragnarsson has stressed that maintenance of consistency is a subject to being helpful and logical. Consistency can be ensured by observing the canon of mnemonics in notation also. In the pattern or in the network, platform arrays, the entities are also in a chain. Chain is also a group of entities but in successful coordination. In the chain, no entity is of equal rank. They are all of different rank but arranged in a sequence from greater to smaller ones. And the chains are formed by successive application of characteristics to a group. Not all members will be of equal rank. The group gets divided into holes, their parts, kinds, various species, and subspecies. Such holes and their parts should be kept together to form a chain of classes. A chain is a sequence of entities in successive subordination. A chain moves down from general to specific, broader to narrower. A chain is always uh, vertical as compared to the array which is usually horizontal. As it moves down, extension of its members, that the breadth of its members, goes on decreasing while their intention, that is the depth, goes on increasing. Grandfather, father, sons, grandchildren make a chain. Also, world, Asia, India, Punjab, Amritsar, and a suburb of Amritsar make a chain of classes. Members in a chain are in a linear kinship. Canons for chain of classes or entities. A chain again is a group of classes, but not of equal rank. Their ranks are consistently varying. Rather, they are in successive subordination, mean decreasing and decreasing and decreasing, or other way around. Ragnarsson has given two sets of rather self evident canons for arranging entities in a chain. One, of course, is canon of decreasing extension and canon of modulation. The canon of decreasing extension. Now, let us explain the implications of these two canons for formation of chains. 
the kind of decreasing extension means that the entities should be arranged in broader to narrower or general to specific or holds to parts order for example asia south asia india north india delhi make a chain of classes in decreasing extension because the area of each entity goes on decreasing asia has the highest area or more inclusive and delhi here in this case is the least one social sciences economics financial economics money banking make another chain of broader to narrower classes as we move down the chain extension that the widths or the breadth of entities goes on decreasing while the intention that the depth goes on increasing we can say that the order of chain should be from extension to increasing intention canon of modulation this canon for formation of chains means that no intervening link should be missed in the classes arranged in their decreasing extension no jumping or no snapping in the chain to say so in the first example we should not directly jump from north india to amritsar omitting punjab it should be india north india punjab and amritsar india north india amritsar though it is in decreasing extension but it's not modulated though this snap chain will satisfy the canon of decreasing extension but will violate the canon of modulation this means that at every step we should apply the broadest possible characteristic india should not be divided directly into cities and states but first into states and union territories and then into districts then cities and towns in this way in the idea plan we will have a network of discrete facets and isolates arranged and laid out in a network of arrays and chains these will be arranged in a flattery sequence in the schedule canon for flattery sequence actually this canon is for making schedules of library classifications it may not apply to abstract classification it is a set of two canons canon of subordinate classes and canon of coordinate classes it is concerned with the layout of the classes in arrays and chains in printed schedules in arrays and chains the classes exist in two dimensions whereas in the schedules these have to be printed in a single linear order this canon lays down that while listing classes should not be separated from their immediate genus if we are to arrange in a flattery sequence the classes as in the diagram their order should be a a1 a2 a21 a22 a221 a222 a223 a3 b c d1 d2 d3 as another example if you are making a chart of your family lineage then you and your brothers sisters should be listed under your father your cousins etc children of your uncle and aunt to make a lateral array with you should be listed under their parents for a flattery sequence children should not be separated from their parents nor species from the genus since the late 19th century we have reached a stage where we have developed a well rounded theory of classification in the pre world war 2 era the theory of classification was only descriptive it was not dynamic that that is what could be inferred from the already published classification systems like the ddc lcc and so on but the theorists like c a cutter w c b sayers e c richardson h e bliss anganathan ranganathan and groups like c r g london f i d c r or d r t sevangalor have contributed considerably towards the premeditated theory of classification system design and evaluation ranganathan rather delved much deeper than others and formed discreetly detailed minute and formal theory on every aspect of library classification he divided the whole work into three plans which he called idea verbal and notational plan and formulated the various objective canons and principles for work in these phases or planes in the idea plane basic subject constitutes 
are sorted into discrete concepts by selection and successive application of characteristics. Sorted out discrete elements called facets and their isolates by Ranganathan are arranged in arrays and chains by use of exclusive canons for them. Ranganathan followed postulational approach in designing classification system. His approach has also been made designing classification objective and mechanical, but has also provided standard reference for evaluation and comparison of classification systems. Above all, teaching and learning of classification has become objective by his, by his canons.